Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another story. That's right, it's a day in the life of Wookie, aka Storytime with Wookie, the only video series in my entire channel that has two completely different names. <laughs> oh man. I'm gonna tell a story basically from my life. It's basically a day of the life of what it was in, so I'm gonna be... Today's video is just literally a story, so I hope you like it. If you do, you can always leave a like, comment, tell me about any of the things I guess I talk about in the story, either laugh at me or if I remind you of something. Um, today's specific day in the life is something I actually talked about on Twitter a little bit uh, ago, but I wanted to kind of do it for the video because I don't think I've ever actually talked about it for a video on here. But it is related to gotcha, so maybe some people have some stuff to think about. Now, we have to go back in time. We have to go back to basically what is Dokkan during its peak. So for a lot of you, some of you maybe don't know, maybe because either you mainly known me for uh, Dragalia stuff. But in the beginning, I was actually super heavy into Dokkan. And thankfully, there are still people who remember me from my specific Dokkan days that watch my Dokkan stuff from time to time. Uh, and I'm very thankful for all the ones who stuck with me for everything. But yeah, back in the day, the first the first mobile game I ever actually played... Well, the first mobile game that I ever actually played was, um... I think Ghost and Goblins on a Nokia, on my, like, old flip phone. <laughs> actually, yeah, now that I think about it, I think that was... Uh, I played Ghost and Goblins on, like, a flip phone, and I was like, alright, eventually I'm gonna beat this, and that's just not the perfect way to play Ghost and Goblins. But the other one I played, eventually, down the road... Um, was Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle, and the reason I played it was because of, of, so I'm a big, I don't know, I, don't, I think it's pretty off, I don't think I really talk about it, mainly because I don't really talk about a whole bunch of my interests that go as far as games, because like, I sometimes get very tired, but I'm a big fan of Giant Bomb, uh, I love all their stuff, um, I always want, I wanted to buy that fucking fuck Ryan Davis shirt, especially... Unfortunately, I joined a little bit too late, so they they joined they they made the they made the China don't care shirts, and then they made the fuck Ryan Davis shirts, which were only specifically there for the big live live stream live the third one, and I missed out on it. Unfortunately, I literally started my watching Giant Bomb like the day after that live stream ended, so I, was, I missed out on that shirt, which is a shame because that's maybe the one actually the Vinny Vania shirt that they recently released. Eh, at some point, I should actually buy a shirt from Giant Bomb. All their stuff like kicks ass. I don't know why I don't buy it. Anyway, big fan of Giant Bomb, and one of the people who used to be on there, Austin Walker, one day was talking about um, a Dragon Ball Z mobile game. He said like, "Oh yeah, it's Dokkan Battle. It's great, uh, Vinny. You should play it, especially if you love Dragon Ball." And, um, especially at the time, when he didn't say, I think, I don't think he specifically said it was great, but it was kind of like the idea of someone kind of getting into their first gotcha, because, the, you know, by that point, you know a lot about, um, Puzzles and Dragons. Like, Puzzles and Dragons at that point was pretty big, and was the main kind of thing of the gotcha pawn style game. But in terms of anime gotcha games, there really wasn't many that I can think of. I think... Technically speaking, I think JoJo, before it closed down, the JoJo Records was going on a little bit before Dokkan. Um, but I can't remember. But for a lot of people, the first kind of dip into the gacha scene, specifically with anime gacha games, was Dokkan Battle. Um, so he was talking about his specific experience of like, yeah, I kind of never really got into gacha games before, but I wanted to try a gacha game. And this one has Dragon Ball Z characters, which I love. You can build teams featuring some of the craziest characters from the specific history. And to be fair, it is true. There are a lot of characters in there that you wouldn't actually expect to be in a Dragon Ball game. Like, at most... Like, some characters, I think, that are in Dokkan, I think it kind of goes a little bit underappreciated now. Um, but there's some characters in Dokkan that have literally never been in any other um, Dragon Ball Z game as someone you can play as. Like, the Ballsack Twins from... Turtle, the, from the Turtles movie, no fighting game, I think, has ever featured them in there, but Dokkan has totally had them as a, as a characters in there. I think there's some, been some card games featuring the, those characters, but I digress. Um, so I ended up trying it, I played it, and I was like, this is really good. And that was kind of my start with Dokkan, and then eventually I stumbled onto the subreddit, um, back then, I had no idea what a Reddit really was. I understood what that Reddit was a thing. I think in college I had a friend, my my friend of mine, um, 
who I refer to as Zarbon when I'm with the Mimi Force, he was kind of big into Reddit and he would like say like, oh yeah, that's where you find all the good gaming posts and shit. And this was like, I think back in 20, 2015, <laughs> when that kind of statement could be said and it was true. It was a very different time back then, but um, so when it came time to find other people, I was never really a message board kind of guy. Um, I actually did end up making one message board post on the Giant Bond forums and I... I, I felt really bad after doing it because I was like, well, now I, I kind of look like an asshole saying this specifically. It was like the dumbest thing you could imagine because it was like I was like not really an intricate in, in, in that kid growing up. And um, so I ended up making a very stupid thing, you know, thinking at the time like, oh, you know, I want like obviously nowadays something that I still totally believe. But nowadays, now that I'm older and I'm a bit smarter and can kind of understand other people's point of views, I could kind of go like, okay, you know what, I should say specific, it was specifically around someone saying they didn't like the writing of Kanji in Naoto, because they saw it as, um, Naoto is against anti-transgender and, uh, Kanji anti-gay, and I was kind of like, I, I was super into Persona, so I kind of made a post saying like, listen, this is what I feel specifically is told in the game, and why I don't really believe if you're something that's anti this style of character, it doesn't really fit, but... Anywho, going on, I don't think anyone ever responded to it. But anyway, to go on. Um, so I ended up going onto the Reddit, and I ended up just kind of chilling there. The Reddit back then was a very different place. There was like... I remember like the pre, like a lot of people I think kind of remember, especially some of the older, uh, some of the newer Dokkan ones don't remember, like people like me and Zed anymore. Um, but for a good chunk of people who have been on the Reddit for a very long time, yeah, they remember me and Zen, of course. Um, but there were mods before us. I think we were like, I think technically speaking, Zen is a third generation mod and I'm a fourth generation that came with Sahal and Laughing Man. I think those were the those were the specific call-ups, and Zahal is the one still on there. I eventually had to stop after I lost my house, and Laughing Man is the Laughing Man, so he was <laughs> he 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 ended up not being the biggest fan of Fish because of the way he handled the sub, and look, yeah, in retrospect, kind of right on that, but I digress. He also did a lot of things that kind of just pissed off the sub in general. And I, he is a very nice dude, by the way. Laughing Man is a very nice guy. Um, not to make him seem like some kind of monster. He's always been super nice whenever I've talked to him. He can come... He, I think to some people, because it's online, he can come a little bit abrasive. But no, he's a perfectly good dude. I've never seen him... <laughs> I've never seen him really be... An, it's a difference between talking kind of like a dick and actually being a dick. He's 100% not a dick. He's a very nice guy. He just doesn't take up with other assholes. So people who fight assholes end up looking like assholes. Which is something actually similar to Zen, which is the same quality he has where he fights assholes. So people who see him out of context are like, this guy kind of looks like an asshole. Not the case though. Super nice dude. Um, so yeah, I ended up getting super into Dokkan. Um... Eventually became a mod. I was hanging out in the questions thread for a good chunk of time. I remember hanging in there specifically because I kind of like, I don't know why I was lurking. I was lurking and not really answering questions. But I remember going in there once and not a lot of people were really answering the questions or the way they answered the questions was kind of like a dickish manner. Like, I, I, I've always had like a pet peeve of like specifically, and maybe it's because of my specific going through in middle school and high school. But the idea of someone that actually genuinely needs help they don't need the attitude. So unless they're specifically coming to me with like an attitude, I was always very much like a, hey, you know, this is how you do that. And if they're frustrated, then you kind of talk to them and, you know, don't be a dick. The best way to teach someone is to not make them feel like an idiot. And I feel like a lot of people don't want to do that um, in some cases. But I was, per but, but mainly because there's a lot of patience behind it. Not everyone has the patience for it. But thankfully, I've always had the patience of it. Um, I was pretty good at Dokkan back in the day that the specific point when I was actually answering the questions thread is maybe the only time I could ever say I was actually good at Dokkan. Um, I want to say up until the Neo God lead? No. 
once the category system hit, I stopped caring, I think. Yeah, I think that was the specific point that I just stopped caring. Because it seemed like at that point, so did so did Dokkan. So it felt like the good way of kind of talking about it. Um, so yeah. And now I think 10 minutes in, I can finally tell you what this actual thing has been leading up to. That was all backstory of my specific situation with Dokkan. Um, this story is specifically about... Um, how a sandwich eventually broke me away from Dokkan. Now, I still play Dokkan to this day, but not in the same way I used to play back in the day. Back in the day, I used to go crazy. I had it on like, I had like two, two three, maybe four accounts that I played concurrently with everything. Um, it was kind of nuts the amount of playing that I used to do. I think in grand total, if you actually combine, if Google Play had ever remembered my old time with Dokkan, I think it would have easily have put over um, 2,000 hours at this point. Because I was, it was literally like my main go-to game to play on the phone. Um, and to the point where it eventually got to the Mew Mew Force, which is why the Mew Mew Force is always just like, why are you talking about this? I'm like, listen, you need to hear about Super Saiyan Goku. But of course, also that came with that, also came the fact that I used to also buy a lot of stones. And in the year 2015 to until I got a job, I did not really have a lot of money because I was just coming off of college. It was a weird spot in my specific history with college because I felt like I had the degree of what I wanted to do. But I really didn't have the actual tools to find a job and what I needed. And the reason is because is my school was a piece of shit didn't actually prepare me for what was to come. They tried. They tried her ter terribly, terribly. The only thing, good thing that ever came out of my school was my friendship with the Mimu Force, and that's it. <laughs> Everything else has been a mistake, I think, from it. Um, at least that's how I... This, looking at the student debt that I have, that's how I feel about it. Um, but yeah, in that specific era, so I didn't really have a lot of money. The way I used to have money back in the day was literally, I think... Yeah, I used to just get, because I was a full-time just college student, so I didn't work at the same time. Which is crazy for me to think about. Now, this is just it just goes to kind of show you how crazy dedicated my sister is, is that she works a full-time job and she also does college at the same time. That wasn't my luxury. For, that's not what I did. But to be fair, she spends way more money on me. I'm able to live on very little money, and I want to say it's specifically because of the gotcha stuff. <laughs> But yeah, back in the day, the way I would save money was is that I would usually get like five bucks a day, specifically when I went, to, maybe like a little bit more, maybe like 20 bucks. 20 bucks sounds about more right. I think five, 20 to five dollars in some cases I would get full on a hundred if it was like, okay, use this for the entire week or so. Um, and from that point on, there was a GameStop near our, our college. And what I would do is that I would buy used games and you have seven days to return them. So the way I kept money is that I just kept returning the games before the seven day deadline was up, getting my money back and seeing how much money I had. I'm like, okay, okay, right now I got like 13 bucks. Let me get another game and combine this with the current $10. Let me see what I got. Okay, I guess Gears of War 2, I'll play that or something. Um, and that's how I usually got a lot of money. That's how I ended up saving a lot of money is that I would put it in pre-order stuff and then I would take the money back out. Um, and that used to work. This was before I was into Dokkan. And then eventually it hit the point where I played Dokkan and suddenly it started kind of dividing between the two. And I started spending a little bit more money on specifically Dokkan. And in some cases I would be spending way more than I actually thought I had or like my specific budget. So sometimes I would be like, okay, for this specific week I have a hundred dollars and I'm using 60 of it on Dokkan to buy some stones for one multi. Okay, for this entire week I have forty dollars. So I have to feed myself with seven with forty dollars worth of food basically. I have a bunch of coupons, let's get it. Buy from the dollar menu stuff. And that's how I used to do it. Um, I didn't really have a lot of money. But whatever little half of that money I went to went to Dokkan. <laughs> And sometimes I would save enough money to buy the big pack and stuff like that. But what eventually happened was that in the beginning I used to be able to be like, um, 
eventually I got into Subway, <laughs> the Subway sandwich shop. Um, and the first time I went to Subway sandwich, um, I would, um, you know, I would get my order. And Subway is very expensive, by the way. It's extremely expensive for one of their goddamn sandwiches. I don't know why it's so expensive, but it's expensive. Um, so I used to use coupons with it, too. And the coupons helped a little bit. Um, but there came a point where I was playing Dokkan and also eating Subway sandwiches at the same time. Um, and eventually one day, this is when it actually broke, is that um, the Int Gogeta and the STR Janemba banner came out. And I ended up buying a pack for STR Janemba. And I remember pulling STR Janemba, and then when I pulled him... There was a point where I was like, when I when I pulled him specifically, I had to make the point of like, oh man, okay, if I do this, I'm gonna have to figure out some way. I'm gonna have to use one of my coupons for Subway. So I did that, and then on the way to school specifically, I noticed I did not bring my coupon with me. So in theory, I wouldn't really be eating unless I specifically made some adjustments in my head of like, okay, so what if I do this and what if I do, what if I do that? What are going to be the specific sacrifices I have to make to get the full price Subway sandwich meal because I just spent money on STR Janemba, who, by the way, I vastly overestimated how much better I thought STR Janemba would be to Int Gogeta. I have, there's not a day that goes by that I don't fucking regret pulling on that fucking banner and specifically pulling him. Both units I have fully rainbow. Both of them I did not really pull on their banner. I know so STR Janemba, if I had literally just stopped pulling, I would have eventually pulled him on future banners and gotten him full rainbow. Because um, eventually he just became worthless. Like, <laughs> they included him on every banner of sorts. And who cares if you pull STR Janemba now? Except for, you know, the easy A is nice, and he has a very nice easy A, but I digress. And then, when I was going on my way to school, I was taking the subway. That was another thing, I forgot another cost. I also had to factor in subway stuff. Um, I used to take a bus and a subway, and if you want to take a bus and subway in California, you either get a pass and you have like a certain day, but some days I couldn't really afford the pass. Um, so there were totally times where I would keep an old discard, I don't think you can do this anymore, I would keep an old discarded like bus ticket and then give it to them and be like, yeah, this is my ticket. Um, and you could get away with it if they said, like, oh, it's expired. By the way, if they caught your ass on this, it was, a, I think, a $100 fucking fine. Um, they don't always check, though. <laughs> so you could very easily save money if you were smart. Um, and there was eventually a card. Like, sometimes the card that you would tap in, your tap card, wouldn't have money in it. But if you gave it to them, like, oh, yeah, here you go. And if you gave it to them as if you weren't guilty at all, and then it blinked up, and you would go, oh no, I've made a mistake. You know, I have to, I, I, I guess I didn't hear it when I tapped in. I could have swore it tapped in. Um, shit, if you act like specifically like you made a mistake, then they'll kind of give you some leeway. They were nice enough to kind of go like, all right, maybe you just kind of messed up on here. But if you at least made it seem like you made an honest mistake, they wouldn't give you the, the full hefty fine. If your ass just didn't have anything, you would just get fined and there was no real way around it. Um, so I had to also remember to always save money to pay for the tap card to make sure that I wouldn't have to get the big ass fine. Um, so there was a bunch of just money stuff that I had to constantly think of. And when I was in, in the subway thinking about the sandwich, thinking of all that, I was thinking to myself, why did I spend in Dokkan? I would rather have this, like, multiple sandwiches than eat... I would rather eat multiple sandwiches than play with this STR Janemba. Especially because once I pulled him and started using him, I was like, he's not that great. He's not $90 worth of great to me. Um, he... It's... it's <laughs> At the time, I was extremely disappointed by STR Janemba, and it only got worse when they gave an easy A to the Ant one. That was really rubbing sand in it, because I'd never pulled the Ant Janemba. Um, and once they gave the easy A to the Ant Janemba, it was like a fucking DOA on STR Janemba. There was no fucking reason to use him. Um, so yeah, that specific banner, when I was making the things in my head of like, can I even eat this sandwich? Do I have to just go without eating? today 
to make up for the fact that I didn't even bring a coupon for this because I decided to go 90 bucks big on Dokkan. Like, what am I doing with myself? And at that time, I was still doing modcasts and stuff, but... At that, I think... No. I Because I still really do like Dokkan, and I wouldn't make videos of it to it, but I don't really spend in Dokkan anymore. And the reason... I want to say specifically that the moment that Dokkan lost me was when they released it as TR Geneba. Because before then, believe it or not, I was perfectly in intent with being happy and playing the game and spending stones and budgeting how I would eat and stuff. But once, you know, once that stuff happened, it became, it was a real like come to, come to home moment. It was like, I don't know what I, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. It also wasn't like I was also making money off of the YouTube stuff, which, what I know with um, Dokkan now, well, it didn't matter because we never made, here's another secret fact about the, uh, the um, subreddit YouTube channel, there has never been once a hundred dollars to take off of that fucking account to put into anyone else's. We were so bad with advertising our stuff and barely doing it. Like, think about that. We ran that specific subreddit, um, channel for years and we only ever got money we never got a hundred dollars out of it never once my youtube account has technically made me made money for me and the thing is is that we were originally going to use the money from that youtube stuff for gift cards to give back to the sub we never hit 100 so we were just really bad at it and me and zen have both gotten better at doing youtube stuff since then but I remember thinking like, damn, when I first hit my first hundred on my own YouTube channel, I was like, I can't believe we made it on here with more, like way less, because there's way less people following me on my YouTube compared to the um, subreddit one. Um, but it just kind of shows how much better I am at planning and how much more videos I also do compared to back then. Um, but yeah, that sandwich, it really kind of broke Dokkan for me because once you kind of like put it into perspective of like was it worth almost not eating today was it worth not potentially eating in the future and for the answer for me is that like no it wasn't now thankfully eventually in because I do spend a little bit more on other gotchas besides Dokkan but the difference is that now I have a fucking job so I'm more smart with how I budget my money um it's at times I feel like I budget my money to an extreme amount, but I would prefer to have money in my bank in case someone in my family needs it, which is really what I do most for for most of the time. Um, like, if that that's kind of where I want to be at in this current moment of my life is that I occasionally want to spend on myself, and then the rest I want to kind of keep hidden for myself. And I want to say it's specifically because of my days with Dokkan is that specific saving mentality. The difference is that now I'm not spending on gotchas anymore. I'm saving it for family stuff, potentially. And again, I don't, and <laughs> nothing has changed in those specific six years since then. I'm still a dude who doesn't make that much money. Um, hopefully someday I could be, but for the time being, I'm not. So what I can do is what I do. Um, I save a whole bunch. And whatever savings money I do have, I help with um, whoever needs it. Because I never know when they need it or something. But yeah, that's kind of today's story. So those it ended up being a little bit of <laughs> the backstory of me playing Dokkan a little bit. Combined with what it was the eventual, like, fall. And to be fair, I still play. I will on occasion. I'm really glad that I haven't done it. Um, this entire year. I have not spent, I think, a single dollar on Dokkan for 2021. But I also think Dokkan has changed that I can actually play it and not really spend money on it. Because I just play smarter now. But, yeah. That's the end of today's story, everyone. I hope you liked it. If you did, you can leave a like. Tell me about your specific story, I guess, with Dokkan. I hope... Um, I hope this was entertaining to some extent. It was a very different kind of video, but, you know. I also hope you enjoyed this whoopers kind of looking like, eee, as I <laughs> specifically talk about um, my history with stuff. But yeah, that's the end of today's video, everyone. You guys have a good day, and I'll see you guys in the next adventure. Peace out.